Assalamu alaikum and a very good morning to each and everyone that's watching uh, the TEDx Talks today. This coming 7th September, we will be celebrating our first World Field Epidemiology Day. Why do we choose 7th September? It is on this date in 1854 that John Snow provide evidence to the source of the London uh, cholera outbreak. It was actually the water pump installed on a broad street and by just him removing the handle of the water pump, the outbreak stops. So what has that got to do with field epidemiology? Field epidemiology is the public health action in trying to under trying to find the answers to what, when, where, and more importantly, why does an outbreak occur, so that an immediate intervention or action can be taken. So field epidemiology will respond uh, in its shortest time with the limited resources available at that time to, uh, to provide the appropriate uh, intervention, immediate intervention to be taken uh, to those who are affected. And so let me just relate this to a similar incident that I experienced some time back. Uh, a director of a hospital uh, alerted the Bureau of Epidemiology of a Health Department uh, that he saw an increasing number of bloody diarrhea uh, seeking treatment at his hospital. So. Uh, I happened to be at the department, so we quickly went down to investigate. Uh, we reviewed the uh, the records at his hospital. Yes, uh, we saw only the foreigners, and so we went to interview the victims, and also the other foreigners and tourists, and also the locals. We took their blood samples and also their stool samples and they were very cooperative they give the, us their stools and because everybody was uh, also excited was alarmed the local health uh, department decided to close all the eating places including the hotels uh, uh, restaurants the, the whole island actually comprises of 80% uh, foreigners and tourists and only about 20% are local residents. So as you can see, the island is, to, uh, is very heavily dependent on tourism. So we need to do our investigation fast. We went to the um, um, local market. We took food samples, fresh food samples for uh, testing. We saw something uh, uh, a positive finding in the stools of the victims as compared to those who are, are not affected, the locals. And so we collected water samples at the source, the reservoirs, and also at the distribution points. Then we went to the uh, residents, their uh, local residents, we went to their houses. We noticed that the locals do not use uh, piped water they dig up uh, wells, pumped water for their consumptions, for their daily drinking and their, and their needs. That's the difference that we notice. The, uh, the water that was distributed to the eating places, uh, to the dwelling house, uh, houses and also to the hotels were from the water pipe from the reservoir as compared to the locals who were only using uh, wells. And so it has to be something with the water. And yes, we went to the local authorities. We showed the, our evidence and they quickly treated the water at the distribution points and also eventually upgraded the reticulation uh, system. What actually happened is that the water, the water reticulation system was a never uh, was no records of it being treated, so it was infested with a parasites. So, so two months later, there were no more. 
there were no more bloody diarrhea reported to the hospitals. So it, it was eventually stopped by just treating the water. And so how do we get our training to be a field epidemiologist? Uh, it's uh, based on the similar uh, training module produced by USCDC Epidemic Intelligence Service Training Program. So depending on each country needs, there are different levels of training. It, uh, we have the frontliners field epidemiology training program that is uh, about three to six months where we train the, uh, the we train them in disease surveillance uh, and then we have the intermediate uh, training program which is about six to a, a year course where we focus on disease surveillance, epidemiology, statistics for data management and and also the whole package itself is a two-year program where it encompasses uh, not only the uh, surveillance evaluation, how to evaluate a, a surveillance system, and we also train them in uh, outbreak response, data management, conflict management, and uh, more importantly, communication. So uh, there are about 185 training programs worldwide in 85 countries so uh, uh, how do we get ourselves connected with all these training programs it is through TEFINET training in epidemiology and public in intervention networks and we have uh, regional networks we have the AMFINET for the African continent we have RETSU for the Latin Americas we have the EPIET for the European continents, and uh, we have the MFINET for the Eastern Mediterranean, and in this part of the world, we have the South Asia Field Epidemiology and Technology Network. That is where I'm currently attached. And through TEFINET, uh, we will have our scientific conference that before COVID, we actually, TEFINET will organize uh, its global scientific conference. And also the regions will organize its regional uh, scientific conference. And this is where the trainees from this, uh, these training programs will compete to have their work presented. And also the alumni and the graduate will gather to share experience and also exchange their expertise. Uh, uh, and this is where we create the strong family bonding because we speak the same epic language uh, and this also brings me to one uh, experience that I can share with you uh, the strong family bonding that we have I was invited as a, a moderator two of us as a moderator to develop a standard operating procedure for response and preparedness avian influenza for bordering districts of Israel, Jordan and Palestine. So as you can see, uh, it's not an easy task uh, trying to develop the standard operating procedure from these uh, countries. With, uh, which uh, we were provided with very limited uh, data, uh, demographic data. Uh, as you can see, uh, from this, uh, the three countries which have very different background in terms of religion, in terms of beliefs, and but Alhamdulillah, uh, uh, we were able to develop the as uh, the standard operating procedure for avian influenza. To be uh, to be used at the districts in bordering these uh, countries. In fact, the the training uh, the the sorry the workshop was held uh, in a neutral place uh, in Istanbul, and a week after the SOP uh, was produced, uh, a real out, uh, outbreak uh, of avian influenza happened in one of the villages at the at the border. And uh, Alhamdulillah, uh, the, the, when it was put to test, the o SOP works. So um, that, that uh, I can say is also 
uh, relate to the uh, the bonding that we have among our field epidemiologists because those who present to pre uh, from these countries are also trained in, in field epidemiology so we have the common uh, epic language uh, with, uh, with similar goals in, in producing we where we, our training uh, are similar so it was uh, that makes the task much easier also just like to share with you um, to be a, a field epidemiologist yes I, I may have sound a, a, a bit uh, may sound a bit difficult but uh, to be a field epidemiologist but uh, not really especially among those who already have a medical background uh, uh, their knowledge and training in medical and clinical helps a lot and a little bit of epidemiology and statistics uh, do bring us uh, ahead in, in being a field epidemiology but also importantly the logical and critical thinking in decision making and communication how we communicate with each other and how we make a, a certain decision uh, very sensitive to the surrounding especially the perception of the people perception of the media uh, and taking into consideration the cultures that makes you a good field epidemiology especially when we need to uh, recommend the, uh, the intervention because uh, like again the interve intervention is uh, appropriate at the particular moment in time because some uh, at most situations uh, the, the decisions is made with limited resources or limited data available at that particular moment in time and if the these findings whenever happen if it is not communicated to those who really need to know or those who can make the decisions then the work of a field epidemiologist is not complete and with that i also like to sh uh, to share with you another experience that uh, i have which i can never forget huh? It's way back in 2004, December 2004, I was called by the Malaysian Relief uh, Team to join them to Aceh, uh, post-tsunami Aceh. It was on the, we went on the third day post-tsunami and you can see even on the third day there were uh, bodies, on, uh, decomposed bodies everywhere. And you can make out whether it is a male or female. You still can make out, and you can still make out whether it is an adult or or, or, or children. Uh, uh, but then you, other than that, you don't know. You don't know what their faith are. You don't know what their religious practices uh, uh, are. The immediate task at that moment was to give them a proper bureau. The thing that whatever we decide at that moment, it is irreversible and we need to take into consideration the sensitivities of the people and also more importantly the health uh, consequences then and also for future and with that we uh, we went had a discussion with the mayor uh, with the mayor of Aceh with their local dignitaries with their experts we sit down and discuss uh, the, the the best decision to be to made at that particular moment in time I would like I would not like to discuss the details of what we did and uh, what was the final decisions but being a field epidemiologist with the experience that you have it does helps you to to make a, a, a good decision the decisions uh, it is com must be communicated well to the people who, who need to know and because whatever you make it has to be logical with loads of common sense uh, that's I think that uh, is how you convey that to the decision makers is also very important and with that I would like to end my talk uh, with this, uh, this slide thank you for listening thank you